good morning student today again we will continue with the same chapter we are all we are up, not afraid to die if we are all together so let us continue what happened when in the third day so by morning on january 3rd the pumps had the water level sufficiently under control for us to take two hours rest in the rotation so it was the morning of 3rd january when the water level was growing lower and lower and so they had sufficient time to take rest for some time and everybody those were present in the boat they had rotationally took some rest but we still had a tremendous leak somehow below the water line and on checking i found that nearly all the boat's main rib frames were smashed down to the knee in fact there was nothing holding up a whole section of the starboard hull except a few cupboard partitions so they saw that nothing was intact in the boat everything had broke broken everything was smashed and there was nothing holding up a whole section of the starboard hull except a few cupboard partitions we had survived for 15 hours since the wave hit but wave walker wouldn't hold together long enough for us to reach australia so though the wave had now stopped but the wave walker was not in a good condition and the, the writer knew that the wave walker cannot survive for a long time till they wanted to reach australia so what happened now i checked our chart and calculated that there were two small islands in a few hundred kilometers of east so now they started checking the map that they had with them and they found that there was some two little islands quite near some few hundred kilometers where they were standing one of them was isle amsterdam the name of the island was isle amsterdam was a french scientific base and where the scientists of the country france worked over here so it was a french scientific base our only hope was to reach these pin prick in the vast ocean so those islands were a little drop of water in the vast ocean but unless the wind and the sea abated so we could hoist sail our chances would be slim indeed so now until the wind of the sea abated we stopped they had little chance of surviving or could hoist the the sails on january 4 now it is almost january 4 after 36 hours of continuous pumping we reached the last few centimeters of water so they had continuously pumping the water from the boat and now very little amount of water had left in the boat now we had only to keep pace with the water still coming in so now they had to keep the water away from the boat so that no water enters in the boat we could not set any sail on the main mast so the mast they had on their boat they could not put any sail on it because the winds were blowing very fast pressure on the rigging would simply pull the damaged section 
of the hull part so we hoisted the strong jib and headed for where i thought the two islands were so uh, finally they thought let us start and let us put the mast and we will simply roll into those area where the island they had seen so they started to their way to the island where mary found some corn beef and cracker biscuits and we ate our first meal in almost two days now somehow mary found out something eatable that was there in the boat it was some corn beef and some biscuits and it was only after two day, days they had something to eat because everything all the food they had stored were all damaged but our respite was very short lived at 4 pm black clouds began building up behind us within the hour the wind was back to 40 knots and the seas were getting higher so their joy was for a very short time because it was by 4 pm they could see another storm coming toward their ship it was coming in the speed of 40 nautical miles per hour so the weather continued to deteriorate throughout the night and by dawn on january 5 our situation was again desperate so he was not very happy because the weather continued to deteriorate that means the weather became very bad and bad and throughout the night and by january 5 our situation was very much desperate that that means they were again in a fear that the boat may be capsized with the storm and the wave so their joy was for a very short time when i went in to comfort the children john asked daddy we are going to die so when he saw i went to meet his children that is susan and jonathan jonathan said that daddy are we are going to die that means he was quite afraid to die and so he was asking his father that whether we are going to die i tried to assure him that we would make it but his daddy consoled his son that no no son we are not going to die because we are heading for an island but daddy he went on we are aren't afraid to die if we can all be together you and mummy so and i so what john said daddy we are not afraid to die if we are all together that means mummy daddy son and daughter if they are all together they are not even afraid afraid to die I could find no words with which to respond but I left the children's cabin determined to fight the sea with everything I had so he had no words to respond because he knew that something very dangerous is going to happen so he could not console himself nor his son so silently he left the place and he went into the ship to see what has happened i left the children kevin jetmine to fight the sea so when he heard such words from his son he thought no let us be brave and save my children and my family from this giant wave to protect the weekend starboard side i decided to have to heave to 
with the undamaged fort hull facing the oncoming wave so he tried to <coughs> to make everything right that is the hull board an undamaged fort hull facing the oncoming wave so now he went tried to protect the ship from the waves using an improvised sea anchor of heavy nylon rope and of two 22 liter plastic barrel of paraffin so somehow he made some improv something to help so that the waves don't destroy their ship so what he to had he had some improvised anchor of heavy nylon rope and a 22 liter paraffin gallon with the help of these things he tried to put the mast above the boat so that they will not destroy the ship now again now see what happened that evening mary and i sat together holding hands as the motion of the ship brought more and more water in through the broken plank so in the evening mary and the writer they sat together for the first time and they hold hands <coughs> through the broken plank we both felt the end was very near then now we knew that it was quite clear that they are going to die we both felt the end was very near but we woke up rose out the storm and by the morning of january 6 with the wind easing i tried to get a reading on the Six ten back in the chart room. I worked on wind speed. So by the next morning or the morning of January six, they came to know that they were quite nearing to some place, and they had a chart where they had seen that the wind speed was lowering, and they got a little bit of satisfaction. that they are now maybe they are safe now so this is the second part of our video we will continue with the third part of the video so until then you keep reading the chapter thank you